There is quite literally a million videos right now on YouTube that will teach you how to get to $10,000 a month. And you've probably seen all of them by now. You've seen the social media marketing agencies. You've seen growth operating, which is pretty hot right now. I bet you've also seen the build and release offers, right? The info products, the whole nine. You've seen everything under the sun. But the question remains is how do you get the results that they promise you you can actually get from those business models? Because for these businesses, there's a lot on your plate. You have to learn how you can drive results. And then after that, you have to learn appointment setting. How can you get potential clients to book calls? And then lastly, you have to learn closing. How can you turn a prospect into a paying customer? So let's just play this out right now. Let's say the time finally comes, right? You're ready for outreach. Reaching out to clients, doing whatever method you think's best, and you finally get your first call, right? And then 20 minutes before the call, they text you. They say, hey, I appreciate it, but I'm no longer interested. Then, a couple days go by, you book your second call. They say, hey, just wanted to thank you for your time, but I'm busy. And then your time finally comes, right? You finally get your first sales call. You run through your presentation off the script you were given from the internet, and they say they wanna think about it. They say they'll get back to you in a week. So you do your job, you wait a week, you reach back out, and they say they're no longer interested. So the flaw in this story is you can't sell, and that's the sad truth. Because there's two basic ways that you can make more money in your business. The first is pounding a nail into the wall with your forehead. And just keep doing outreach, keep booking calls when you haven't mastered the art of selling or the second way, get better at selling. Now, out of those two, which would provide you with the most leverage? Clearly the first one. Learning and mastering sales, it gives you leverage. You can do less, but you can get away with more. And that's how you get your business off the ground. And here's an example. If you look at a person like Iman Ghazi, right? He started a social media marketing agency. Eman brought in talent to run his ads. So all he focused on was outreach. He mastered the art of sales. He just did outreach and he closed clients. Not only allowed him to scale to $10,000 a month, but well beyond that. So the problem is right now is you are trying to run before you can walk. The first step in going from a entrepreneur who's trying to get to $10,000 a month and an entrepreneur who gets to $10,000 a month and beyond that is learning to sell. You need to master the basics of getting clients to book calls and then turning that potential prospect into a paying customer. This is literally the exact skill that got me from zero to $20,000 a month in less than 60 days. Because right now, even if you're not at $10,000 a month, the most valuable thing that you have is your focus. It's not multitasking, trying to master four different skills at once to be below average at all of them. It's learning the foundation of how business works. Agencies would go belly up if they couldn't get clients. Stores would go bankrupt if the product couldn't move off the shelves. Sales is literally the lifeblood of business and you need to master it or you're literally at the worst disadvantage you could ever be in in this game. It's the most high demand skill in the entire world and it's by far the most profitable. The people you look up to who have ran the business models that you're attempting to run right now have already mastered it. But the question is, where do you start, right? Because even if you wanna be a high ticket closer, get to 30K a month, beyond that, whatever, or if you're just trying to get your agency, growth operator, whatever it is, dude, just trying to get that business off the ground, it all starts here. Now in this department, you might not have little if any knowledge of how sales works, but it's not all bad. We're gonna solve that issue together. There are two basic skills that you're gonna master. That's gonna help you out with literally more than any other skill that you could learn right now. It's by far the most important. Setting and closing. So since we're new, let's learn setting. Let's learn the art of getting clients to book calls with you because as a new business, Clients don't come to you. You're not getting referrals. You have to learn how to do outreach and how to get a date on the calendar. And this leaves you with a few ways to contact people, right? You have cold email, you have DMs on Instagram, right? You have cold calling, you could even do door knocking, right? I've done that too. 
So the best outreach for your business or if you're trying to become a sales rep is when you can utilize most of your weapons that make you an effective sales rep. Here's what I mean. Your goal is to get curiosity on your side. It's to be different. And let me explain that. So let's just say for an example, I'm sending out a cold email and I say, hey, Jason, this is Nate with XYZ Company. I saw your blank, but I noticed ABC. Now my company fixes ABC for companies like yours. You're done. It's literally gonna take you 100, if not thousands of emails just to land a potential meeting or even get a response back. And I know because I've done it. You're sending words on a screen. You have literally the least influence in this department. So here's a better way that you can do cold email. Send a Loom. Loom, it's an application. You can download it on the App Store right now. When you send a Loom, you do three things. You show A, you're a real person. Two, that you're confident because you're not scared to talk to people. And then lastly, and most importantly, that you're different. You're not doing the same thing that everyone else is doing. And it just makes you a commodity. You're like, you're like a parrot if you just do the same thing. Here's the truth is your potential client is on autopilot. They just look through their email. They don't even remember what the last email was about, dude. They don't even know. They're just on autopilot. They're subconsciously going through their email. And if you say the same thing as everyone else, you're going to get the same results as everyone else. So what you need to do is get their mind from autopilot to consciously thinking they're actually engaged in what's going on. They can use emotion. And this is called breaking preoccupation. So no matter what anyone's doing, they always feel like they're doing something. They're organizing their email. They're talking with a friend. They're looking for a response at work. Whatever it is, dude, you need to break that preoccupation. And that comes down to a hook building curiosity. So imagine you are an e-commerce store and you get a random email. You get a video from some guy, John Smith at gmail.com. Immediately, your first thought is, what is this? Is this a scam? Is this something I shouldn't watch around my kids? You're immediately curious as to what it is. And then because of that, you have a higher likelihood to watch the video. Now, cold email, it's not the best strategy in the world. So let's go into another one. Let's go into Instagram DMs. A lot of people are doing them right now, and I'm gonna explain how you can be a little bit better. So you need to stand out from the crowd. I get probably three DMs a day that all have a similar structure. Hey Nate, I saw your XYZ, and I was curious if you're looking to ABC. Let me know if you're interested. It's trash, because it's literally the same thing as everyone else. I'm not even thinking when I'm reading them. It, it engages me literally not even the slightest bit it invokes no emotion now if you send a video and you show that you're a real person you immediately establish credibility which is important you engage me because i don't just get video dms all the time and it makes you different it shows that you're a person you're confident you're real and here's how you present it if you're scared of doing that if you're scared of sending a video dm a you, you got to get over your fears but b is you can make it simple Build curiosity in the prospect. Message them and say, hey, Nate, quick question about your product. Or, hey, Nate, quick question about your service. The first thing I'm going to think is, is he looking to buy my product or service? I'm entitled. I am inclined to respond. But I'm also curious. Why, why is this random guy I've never talked to, why is he DMing me something like this? Instead of just using the same script as everyone else. For outreach, opening a loop, it's probably the biggest advantage you have. And here's why you are taking someone from the subconscious mind to being actively engaged in what you're presenting them. It's the same way that you can talk about conspiracy theories for hours because you, you want to find the answer. You keep looking for an answer that doesn't exist. It's the same principle here. You're a social media marketing agency, let's say, and you're trying to land a local business as a client. So you got this guy, his name's Jim. You want to give Jim a call, right? Jim is at a party. Right, it's packed, it's crowded, it's loud. You give him a ring. Jim's like, you know what, what the hell? I'm gonna answer this. Right. And when Jim answers the phone, if he hears, Hey Jim, it's it's Nate Morsey with Nate Morsey's agency. I noticed XYZ and I was wondering if you were interested in solving XYZ through what my company does, ABC. He's gonna hang up, plain and simple, because you sound like a parrot. You sound like everyone else. Now, if you call Jim and you just say, Hey, is this uh is this Jim? It invites curiosity, it invites emotion, it engages him. He has no idea who I am. Am I scamming him? Am I his doctor? Am I, am I a lawyer telling him he's about to get sued? He has no idea and it invites curiosity. And then from there, he's probably gonna say, yeah, who is this? And then you say, hey Jim, it's just Nate. 
I had a quick question I was hoping you could help me out with with your business. And because of that, the reason why we go that route is we invite more curiosity. People like to talk about themselves and their possessions. That's the approach that I like to take, especially when it comes to cold calling. Because the biggest obstacle you face is trust, right? It's the only real objection you face in sales. And because of this, we're met with a ton of sales resistance. Like if you just call the way I was calling before, like, hey, it's Nate with my agency. I want to sell you stuff. It raises all that sales pressure. You want to deflate it. You want to be cool. You want to be calm. You want to be collected. That's going to rub off on the prospect. One of the best salesmen I have ever learned from talked to me about the importance of lowering your tone, of being simple, of being easy to talk to through your tonality and your wordplay. So when we say, I just had a question about your business, you're making it easy to say yes versus hard and just saying, oh, I have a question for you. You're making it easier to say yes to. And people who say that cold calling is dead, they probably just suck at sales. Like cold calling is great. And the next strategy, door knocking, people who also say is dead, is completely a lie because I've literally made over $300,000 using this exact strategy. The reason why I think door knocking, it's, it's not a bad place to start at all is because you can utilize all your weapons. As a salesperson, through DM and cold email, unless you're sending looms or video DMs, you can't use this. Like your mouthpiece is only a part of what makes you great at sales. You have your hands, you have your body language, the whole nine. And in door knocking, you can use all of it. So let's just say for an industry, you're selling solar, right? You go door to door for solar. And you go, you knock on this random person's door. They have no clue who you are, right? You knock on the door. The first thing they're probably thinking is who the hell is this guy knocking on my door, right? And you pitch him. If you just knock the door and you say, hey, my name's Nate Morsey. I'm with Nate Morsey's solar company. And I was just checking to see if you were interested in going solar. It's trash. It's garbage. A, I sound like everyone else. The door's already been knocked before. These people have already been reached out to via email, via DMs, everything, even cold calling. You need to have a different approach. You need to be a little bit different. You need to open the loop. You need to be easy to talk to. You need to invite curiosity in the prospect. So let's say we run that back, right? Now on the doors, it's a little bit different. The leads are the coldest they could ever be, but they're also free. That's why I like the doors. You can just knock them. There's no cost to acquire a new client besides sweat equity. So the first thing is when you knock a door, do not say, hey, how you doing? And the reason being is every single other rep that has knocked that door said the same exact thing. And you just sound like a parrot. So say something that's unique to you. If it's howdy, say howdy. Say howdy, name's Nate. The reason I'm stopping by is two homes down from you guys. Your neighbors, Dan and Lisa, they have like a huge boat out front. You guys have probably seen it, right? Cool. So they had a question and then you get right into your stuff. Invite curiosity, use a hook, gather information from the neighborhood, talk to people, ask them what their names are, and then leverage that to get leads. The reason why we use a framework like that is two things. A, it invites curiosity. Why is he working with my neighbor? What is he doing? What is he selling? What did he help my neighbors out with? You're opening the loop and the prospect wants to close it. That's the overarching theme here. Your best advantage as a salesperson is being different from the last guy. Inviting curiosity, building authority, and this whole concept is called frame. Your ability to keep the prospect following your sales roadmap is one of, if not the most important thing in all of sales, asking questions you know the answers to. The reason why it's so important to ask questions that you know the answer to is because essentially they're tie downs, right? And when you ask open-ended questions, it can just make the, the sales process go completely off the track. Part of it is you want it to be streamlined. You want it to be simple. You want it to be easy to say yes to. If you want the full crash course, that's actually gonna go in depth as far as appointment setting goes. So just shoot me a DM on Instagram called setting and I will send you over the full crash course. We'll go in depth, break it down even further for whichever form of outreach you are looking to do. And as always, stay focused stay committed, and take action.